Hey everyone, Sin here. Today we're going to do some engineering and stuff. In this video we're going to implement a TCP IP socket on an ESP8266 ESP-01 module and we're going to communicate with it using LabVIEW's TCP IP functions. The objective here is to show you how to send and receive commands from your ESP8266 using LabVIEW which you can then expand to your specific application. This may be as simple as turning on and off an LED or relay or some basic data acquisition. And the best part about it is there is no custom firmware like links required. So if you already know what an ESP8266 is and how to connect it to the hardware and you just want to write the lab view code step by step, skip ahead. So I'm not going to go into great detail on what the ESP8266 is as there are literally hundreds of videos on this topic. But in summary, the ESP8266 is a Wi-Fi module based on a 32-bit microcontroller manufactured by Espressive Systems. The ESP8266 is a system on a chip or SOC that contains a fully functional Wi-Fi stack and TCP IP stack which allows any microcontroller to get connected to a Wi-Fi network. There are many revisions and models of this SOC as you can see here. However, in our case, we'll be using the AI Thinkers ESP-01 module. Here is an overview of the ESP-01 board and its pinout diagram. The pin description is as follows. VCC is the power pin through which 3.3 volts is supplied. Ground is the ground pin. TX, this pin is used to transmit serial data to other devices. RX, the RX pin is used to receive serial data from other devices. RST or reset, it is the reset pin and it is active low. The ESP will reset if the reset pin receives a low signal. CHPD, this is the chip enable pin and it is active high. It is usually connected to 3.3 volts. GPIO 0, the GPIO 0 or general purpose input output pin has dual functions in this case. One for normal GPIO operation and the other for enabling the programming mode of the ESP8266. And lastly, the GPIO2 pin, this is just another general purpose input pin. Just a general warning before we move on to the connection diagram, the ESP8266 is not compatible with 5 volts and the ESP-01 module does not have a voltage regulator on board. Make sure that the power supply to the ESP8266 is 3.3 volts and preferably from a dedicated power supply rather than taking it from the 3.3 volt pin of the Arduino. There are infinite resources when it comes to connecting the ESP-01 to an FTDI programmer or Arduino, but here is a generic connection schematic for the ESP-01 which should be enough to get you started with either an Arduino Uno or a USB to UART adapter. Note here, all you need to do is connect the power, tie chip enable high and use a momentary switch to tie GPIO0 to ground when you want to program the ESP-01. You then need to connect the TX and RX pins to your serial to USB adapters, RX and TX pin respectively. But if that isn't enough, here is a nice diagram on how to connect the Arduino Uno. Just note, you must connect the TX and RX of the ESP to the Arduino's TX and RX respectively, as you are using them as a pass-through. The ESP has three bit modes as we can see, and we're only interested in two of them. These are the download mode for flashing firmware and code, and the running mode, well, for running your code or custom firmware of course. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using a USB to UART converter, which has done all the hard work for us. However, a slight modification is required in order to flash code to the ESP-01 module. The modification to the USB to UART adapter is required to allow you to put the ESP-01 into download mode, so we are able to upload our sketches from the Arduino IDE. To put the ESP-01 into flash mode, you must short the GPIO0 pin to ground when powered as indicated by the boot mode table. This is done by adding a momentary switch to the USB to UART adapter as shown. If we examine the circuit diagram, we can see when you press the switch, GPI0 is shorter to ground, otherwise it is normally open. So when we want to run the code, we simply just unplug the ESP-01 and plug it back in to reset. So the procedure for this is simple. Hold the switch down when plugging it into your USB port. Hold it down for one second after the USB is recognized, then let go. 
Now you should be ready to program your ESP-01. The ESP can be programmed using the Arduino IDE. However, in order to do that, you need to make a few changes to the Arduino IDE. First, of course, open the Arduino IDE. Then go to File, Preferences, paste the URL from the ESP8266 GitHub into the additional Board Managers URL field. Note you can add multiple URLs here by separating them with a comma. Next go to Tools, Board, Board Manager and search for ESP8266. Select the newest version and click Install. After connecting and configuring the ESP-01 in programming mode, as mentioned in the previous section, open the Arduino IDE and in the board options select Tools, Board, then select Generic ESP8266 Board. Additionally select the appropriate port number in the IDE, i.e. the port where your ESP-01 is connected to your USB port. Now you are ready to program your ESP8266. Admittedly, I'm not an expert in C, but I know enough to understand most text-based languages which is all you really need as an electrical engineer for debugging and getting things working. So all I did to get the ESP-01 to act as a TCP socket server was modify an example found on these two web pages which I will link down below. So all credit goes to them, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, just modify it to suit your purposes. So if you're interested in learning how the code works, go and visit them and I'll make the code available on my GitHub. For the purposes of this video, all we'll need to do is enter our Wi-Fi, SSID and password. You can also define the port of your choosing, but I will leave it as the default. The ESP-01 will then connect and output its assigned IP address and port we can connect to. So let's upload the sketch to the ESP and test it out. Before we upload the code, confirm the ESP-01 is in download mode and you have selected the board and correct COM port in the Arduino IDE. Once this is confirmed, hit the upload button and your code will compile and eventually upload to the ESP-01. If you get a timeout error, the board is not in download mode or you have made a connection error. Once the code is uploaded, simply unplug the board and plug it back into the USB port to see its output on the serial monitor. As we can see here, we have successfully established a connection with our Wi-Fi access point and outputted the IP address of the ESP-01 and port required to connect to it. And that's it. Once this is running, it's time to write the LabVIEW TCP client code to connect to it. So here's something I prepared earlier, which will act as the TCP client for our TCP server socket. If you want to skip the explanation, I will leave a time lapse on how to create the VR from scratch at the end. You can also access the VR on my GitHub in the description below. So if we examine the front panel, we can see we have a string indicator which will display the incoming message from the server, and a string control which will send a string message to the server when we press the send button. The waiting for message boolean indicator is just there to handle the TCP timeout error in LabVIEW and let us know that the server hasn't sent anything. You will see it turn off when we read a message from the server. So if we examine the block diagram by pressing Ctrl E on the front panel, the block diagram will appear and here is the code, which is pretty much self-documenting. We have our initialization function, the TCP open connection function, which takes in the IP address and port number of the TCP socket server and establishes a connection. We then pass through the connection ID to our while loop, where we either write nothing, or if the send button is pressed, we then send a string message that is concatenated with an end of line constant using the TCP write function. We then read any messages that are available from the server using the TCP read function. Now setting up the TCP read function can be tricky as it can bottleneck your VI if you don't know what you're doing. First you specify the read operation mode. Here we have selected CRLF because we expect to receive a carriage return followed by a line feed from the Arduino serial monitor after each message. Be careful here because the CRLF option will cause the TCP read function to pause your VI's execution until either of the following conditions are met. All the bytes specified are read, a CRLF is received within the number of bytes specified, or the timeout runs out. If you don't realize this, your VI will be stuck waiting until either of those conditions are met. I will explain how to handle this shortly. Next, we specify the number of bytes to read. You can determine this programmatically based on your application, but here I have just chosen 512 bytes, which is plenty. And finally, you specify the timeout value in milliseconds. This is the time the TCP read function will wait before spitting out a timeout error. By default, this is 25 seconds, 
so if you don't receive anything within 25 seconds, your application will be paused for that long if you don't handle it correctly. Here I specified it as zero because I want the TCP read function to always be polling the server for a message and I will handle the timeout case in the case structure to follow. Note, by doing this, the message received will be displayed then overridden continuously. To keep the last message received, I'm using a feedback node to display the last message received from the server. You can also use a shift register for this, they are equivalent. And lastly, we handle any TCP errors using a case structure. Here, all we are doing is handling the timeout error, which we ignore and write a true value to the boolean indicator to let us know that we have timed out and not received a message. We also handle server disconnection errors, which we just inform the user by writing a string to the front panel indicator and ignore the error. Lastly, we exit the loop only if another error occurs or the server sends a closed message. We then close a reference to the connection ID using the TCP close connection function and that's it. Now we can talk and receive messages from the ESP8266 or any other TCP server. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next part.